Hello, I'm Robin Worley, welcome to Lenscraft. Today I'm looking at the luminance masking tools found in On One software. I'll be using On One Effects 2021.5 for this, but you'll also find the same tools in On One No Noise. Layer masks in On One are used to control where on the image you can see the effect of an adjustment. Luminance masking, or luminosity mask as they're also called, is one technique for creating these layer masks. It involves creating masks using the luminance of the pixels in an image, or how light or dark the pixels are. To better understand the process, I've already added a black and white filter to this image. When I click the icon at the top left of the filter, it reveals a layer mask which I can paint onto. I also have a set of masking tools and controls appearing in the top toolbar. The white rectangle thumbnail represents the current mask on the black and white filter layer. The filters in On One Effects work as layers, and each one has its own layer mask attached. When the layer mask is completely white as it is here, it allows the effect of the filter to be seen across the entire image. But I can also paint onto the layer mask to hide or reveal the black and white filter. If I select the gradient tool, I can use it to draw a black and white gradient onto the mask. If you look at the mask, you can see that the top part is now black and the lower part white. Notice that where the mask is black, it hides the black and white filter effect to show the colour image below. When I move the gradient around, it changes the mask and changes where we see the image colour. We only see the effect of the filter where the mask is white. Now watch what happens when I extend the graduated area. Notice how the black and white filter blends into the coloured area. If you look at the mask, you can see there is a graduated area between the black and white ends of the mask. To view the mask rather than the image preview, I can click the view button. When we look more closely at the graduated area of the mask, we can see that it's grey. This is important because whilst black on the mask hides the filter and white allows the filter effect to be seen, grey will partially hide it. The lighter the grey, the more we see the filter's effect. Whilst the darker the grey, the more the effect is hidden. Let's reset the mask by clicking the reset button and then return to viewing the image by clicking the view button a second time. When we look at the black and white image, you see that some areas are light whilst others are dark. This is the same with a luminance or luminosity mask and it looks like the black and white image. This is because the luminance mask is created using the luminance of the pixels in the image. Looking at this image, if we create a luminance mask, it should hide the filter in the dark areas, but not the light ones. We can see this by clicking the lumen button to create the luminance mask. The darker the pixels in the image, the more the colour of the underlying layer shows through. But where we have the lightest pixels, we see the effect of the filter converting the image to black and white. As before, we can view the luminance or luminosity mask by clicking the view button. The basic luminance mask can be useful, but On One provides some tools we can use to refine it. For example, we can invert the mask using the invert button. Now when we view the image, the black and white filter is hidden in the lightest areas. To return to the default empty mask, click the reset button. I'll just recreate the luminance mask again, because the next control to understand is the density slider. Imagine now that this mask is made up of individual pixels and that each pixel can range between black and white. Also that we can measure how dark one of these pixels is on a scale of 0 to 100. If a pixel is at 100 then it's black and when it has a value of 0 it's white. A pixel with a value of 50 would be a mid-tone grey. What the density slider does is control the level of the darkest pixel in the mask. When it's at 100, the darkest pixels are black, but if I move it to 50, the darkest pixel becomes a mid-tone grey. It also spreads the rest of the pixels across the range of 0 to 50, making them lighter. If we think about the effect this will have on the image, it should allow more of the filter effect to be seen. When I click the view button to return to the image preview, you can see this. Now let's go back to viewing the luminance mask because I want to explain the levels control. The levels control works like the density slider, except there are three controls. Although there are no values on the controls, the range is again from black on the left to white on the right, with a mid-tone grey in the middle. Watch what happens to the darkest area of the mask when I move the black level to the centre. 
When I move the black level, I'm setting the point in the tonal range where the pixel in the mask turns black. If I move the level to the centre, any pixel in the mask that are darker than a mid-tone grey turn black. Notice also that this causes a hard cutoff in the mask because I haven't adjusted the mid-tone level. When I then move the mid-tone level to the right, it blends the transition of the luminance mask. We now have a luminance mask that's black until the midpoint and then gradually becomes lighter. In other words, this mask targets only the lightest 50% of the image. This causes the filter to be hidden from the darkest 50% of the image. Then if I invert the luminance mask, it targets the darkest areas of the image, but is hidden from the brightest 50%. I'll now move the black level to the far left and reset the mid-tone level to the centre by double-clicking it. The white level does the same thing as the black level, but it controls the level where the pixels in the luminance mask turn white. Using the levels, you can refine the mask to better target different areas of the image. Now let's look at the window control. Imagine a situation where you want to affect the mid-tones in an image without affecting the darkest and lightest areas. We can do this using the Windows control. Watch what happens to the mask when I move the white window slider towards the centre. The lightest areas of the mask turn black. Because those areas are now black, they aren't affected by the filter. Then, if I move the black window slider to the right, it changes the darker pixels to black. The problem I find with using the window slider on a luminance mask is that it creates hard edges in the mask, for example where we change from black to light grey. It's possible to avoid this hard edge on the black side by moving the black level to the right. Unfortunately this trick doesn't work with the white level because the mask is changing from black to white. One final point to highlight about luminance masking is that you can combine it with other masking tools. For example, I can create a luminance mask for the landscape, but then add a graduate to the sky to hide the filter effect there. I can also use the masking brush to paint out the effect of the filter in any area of the image. Alternatively, I could paint the effect onto the image. Now that we've looked at some of the features, let's look at an example to apply luminance masking to this image. I've already applied the daily vitamin preset to this image, but I've had the filters disabled. When I turn them on, I like their effect, but I find them a little too strong in some areas. For example, the Tone Enhancer works well with the midtones and highlights, but not as well with the shadows. I can therefore create a luminance mask to hide the effect from the darker areas. When it comes to the Color Enhancer filter, I like what it does, but I find the effect too strong everywhere. I don't need to create a luminance mask though for this, as I could reduce the effect with the Opacity slider. Now let's say I want to add a glow filter effect. I want this to affect the mid-tones and the highlights, but not the shadows. After adding the glow filter and adjusting the settings, I can create a luminance mask. I'll then move the white and mid-tone sliders on the levels control to the left. I could even combine the brush tool to paint in the effect onto the heather in the foreground. Whilst the luminance masking tools in on one don't provide as much control as say a luminosity masking panel in Photoshop, they are very effective. I hope you found today's video helpful. If you have, please take a moment to share it. I'm Robin Worley, you've been watching Lenscraft, I'll see you soon for another video.